Good evening and praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you this evening. Welcome to our midweek Bible study. We really appreciate you attending. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for faithful people, Lord, willing to check in with us and to listen to your word and to, to love on you, Lord, to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good evening, church members. I see you filing on. I saw Brother Gio, Sister Lindsay, Sister Raquel, Brother Wesley, amen. Sister Gigi, thank you. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Brother Shay. Amen. And welcome. Amen. Sister Yolanda. Praise the Lord. Brother Newman, Sister Newman, praise the Lord. Sister Jackie, amen. Sister Jacqueline, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, brother and sister Ruff. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Michael Seth. Praise the Lord, Sister Ashley Henry. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Sister Teen. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Brother and Sister Johnson. Sister Jeanette Burgess, praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome. Welcome to the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord tonight is in your house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister uh, Sister Peggy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Lindsay, do you have Sister Margaret there with you tonight? Amen. Never can tell. Amen. Love seeing her all the time. Sister Caprice, praise the Lord. Brother Jeff, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. There's another uh, game night coming up soon, church family. Amen. Get ready. Come on and be a part. Come on and fellowship. Amen. That's good. Amen. Praise the Lord, Sister Racine, Sister Victoria. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's always good to have you all joining us. Hallelujah. 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 I've got a lot of scripture tonight. Amen. I, I hope you have your notepad out. I mean, I have a lot of scripture. I don't know that I'm going to cover all this scripture, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to go through it. But I actually have the scripture sitting here in front of me. It just wants... Once it started coming, it just kept on flowing. And so, so that's the way it is. Amen. And praise the Lord and welcome to our Facebook guest. Thank you for joining us. By the way, if you're out there and you're going to be joining us or you're listening after Sister Renee or Brother Alpha or Sister um, Dania, as you all tap in. Praise the Lord. Glad to have you. Sister Natoya, amen. You all that have tapped into the Monday night Bible study, looking to understand what God has already displayed and, and uh, decipher it. Praise the Lord. That is a good thing. That is like the Bereans that are noted in the Bible. They were more noble than those other ones from Thessalonica in that they studied the scriptures daily to see whatever was being said to them, whether it was so and that whether it was actually documented. Praise the Lord. You want to know if you got it right. You want to know where to find it. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you take notes. This is Bible study. We're going to learn some things that are written in the Bible tonight, but in particular as it relates to our time. And I'm excited about the word of God. But before we get started too far in, I want to pray. Amen. I want to pray for you and your heart. 
I want to pray for those that are listening. I want to ask God to season our environments as we network in the spirit. Can you imagine all the different places that when we do this online thing, how the Lord is spread out into our communities, how there comes, uh, the devils have to be getting upset with us when we are out there purporting this kind of spiritual networking. They've got to be upset because there's a line from this house to your house, to another house, to the house beside you, and it's streaking. The presence of God is, is uh, from a linear perspective, draw the lines to all the households in our congregation. And my goodness gracious, we've got a network of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Enemy has to be upset by that. Amen. I'm not apologizing for it either. I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray right now. Join me. By the way, because the power of life and death is in the tongue, let's pray out loud. Let's just go ahead and, and rattle the kingdom of hell by praying out loud those things that are going to bring life about. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you right now for your word. Thank you for what you are doing and what you're going to continue to do. God, light up every house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fill it with your presence, Lord. You are the light of men, Lord Jesus. And God, we're asking you to shine brightly tonight. Help us understand your word. And I thank you so much for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Sister Tawana and Brother Michael Benjamin. Praise the Lord, Sister D. Lowe. Praise the Lord, Brother Barry. Amen. Glad to see you out there. Sister Shonda Foster, glad to see you out there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we start tonight in dealing with the topic, my gosh, what in the world could I be going into when we talk about rock, of you have heard about hitting rock bottom, meaning it's the bottom. It's the very dredge of everything. This is where you draw a line in the sand. You can't make it. There are people that when they hit rock bottom, they start contemplating suicide. There's no hope for them, and so on. One thing for sure, when a person hits rock bottom, now, here is what, they are ready for change. Now, what change? They are ready for change. It's at rock bottom that behaviors in people's lives change. Hallelujah. And everybody has a different rock bottom. They just do. And so rock bottom for some comes a lot sooner and with a lot less intensity than it might be for someone else. Rock bottom could be, uh, if I tried to come up with something, uh, I, you know, uh, when someone's getting ready to lose their family because of a drug addiction or, you know, when you hit rock bottom, if there's a death in the family and that was your main person that kept you on top, that kept you thriving, it was your motivator, that was your boo. And all of a sudden now that there's been a death in the family and your boo is gone and so you just don't know what to do. You're all discombobulated and, and you don't know. You just are just down. You just go into a state of depression. You hit rock bottom. And the only way to come out of rock bottom is with a behavior change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, so when we talk about rock bottom, we're talking about people. There's no, you, you can't go down any further. You see, so. 
So that's what happens to you. Now, let me say this. If I were to say what my rock bottom was, because, you know, I came to the Lord. <laughs> I came to the Lord. I wasn't saved at 37. I came to the Lord, got saved at 37 because I was ready for change. And see, my rock bottom was that I was, I was facing my mortality. I actually thought that I was going to die. And I felt death all over me. And it didn't help that one of my fraternity brothers, uh, not, he wasn't a fraternity brother, he was a fellow football player, well-known, uh, had come to the Lord, was preaching the gospel in Michigan, and at 44, he died. Now, he was older than me at that time. You know, he was 44, but he passed away at 44. My gosh. You know, and here he passed away when I was feeling my mortality at 37. And so I said, oh, my goodness. Oh, and, and, and I became, you know, you couldn't tell it, but I became distraught. And so what happened with me is I prayed to the Lord and said, God, I know I don't deserve, I don't deserve for you to save my life, for you to fix me, to, for you to heal me, for you to turn the tables on me. You know, I, I've been pretty, I've been a pretty bad individual, but if, is there any way I cannot go to hell? You see, I knew I was going to die. God, is it any way? Do I have any chance to, to turn it around so that I can, I can make it to heaven? I don't want to go to hell. I hear that hell is a bad place, and I don't want to go there. And God, can you please help me? If there's any way possible, I'm not asking you to save my life. I realize that I'm going to die, but can I please not go to hell? And then I said to him, and I don't know the way to heaven. All these doctrines out here, all these people, there's a thousand different ways to be saved. Everybody has an opinion on what you have to do to be saved. And God, my goodness gracious, can I, I just want to make it to heaven, Lord. Can, can you help me? And see, God heard my prayer. God heard my, my humble prayer of repentance, my acknowledging of my sin, and God started listening <clears throat> to what I was saying to him, and God helped me. That's the thing. See, that was my rock bottom. I have a few other rock bottoms, you know, but they all are not as severe as my mortality. Hey, if you get ready to die, you need to... <laughs> Where are you going to go? What are you going to say when you've had the chance in this life to decide to walk with God or to walk in your own ways? And even though you may have justified your behavior and who you have become and how you have proceeded forward in your life and wherever you associate the blame of how you ended up in the condition of your life, wherever it rests, it doesn't matter when you die. When you die, either you chose God or you didn't. And if you chose God, did you really choose him? Or were you just playing games? Or were you just trying to get by? Or were you just trying to have a good life here on earth? You see, these are questions that we have to ask. Because when you hit rock bottom, that is the time that a person considers behavior changes because it cannot stay this way. I must change. I cannot stay the same. Rock bottom is an ugly place. At rock bottom, you may not be able to feed your children. Man, what a disaster. Boy, you have children, you love your children, but it's a disaster if they put their feet under the table and you don't have a decent meal to put in front of them. That is critical. That is 
See, when it comes to the children, when you abuse, if, if and when you abuse children, what a, you deserve to go to rock bottom. You're supposed to be better than that. And see, so when I'm saying things like this to you, I'm saying rock bottom is, is a dreadful place. Rock bottom hurts. There's pain at the bottom. There's seemingly no way out at the bottom. Things just keep happening keep getting worse and worse and worse. And if one more thing happens, it's just the end. See, that's what rock bottom, rock bottom is an ugly place. It's an ugly place. It's a place to avoid, a place to run from. And anyone or any situation that will save you when you're at rock bottom, you'll reach for it. Yes, you will. You will reach for it. Some people stay just one level above their rock bottom all their lives, and they live a miserable life because they know they are just one step from just completely failing in life. It's a horrible place to dwell. You don't want rock bottom. You want away from rock bottom. You want better. You want more. You want to produce. You want to be able to, to be able to, to take care of things. You want to be able to have some substance. You want to be able to, to carry the day for those that look to you. And see here at rock bottom, you're just helpless. You're helpless. You're a helpless victim. Rock bottom is an ugly place. Rock bottom is very ugly. And so we, we visit rock bottom so that we can understand what's happening. Now, when, when, when my corporation started purging jobs and people were losing their jobs, and then when, when Chrysler and when GM plants were closing and you started hearing about people considering suicide and they're going to walk, they're going to drive up to the Delaware Memorial Bridge, get out of the car and jump over and kill themselves jumping off the bridge. And that's why they have those signs up there because people have jumped off those bridges. Say they lose their job. That was their rock bottom. That was their rock bottom. You see, they, they just didn't have it in them to, to be able to go on. They became so accustomed to the lifestyle they were living. And when that lifestyle gets stripped from them, then now they have nothing. See, these people that put 14 hours a day into their jobs and all only to lose them because the company goes belly up anyway. Makiyayo Mosa. Huh? See, see, you put that much time into that job only to lose it anyway. You see, there's all kinds of ways and all kinds of things that can happen to an individual that forces them down a, a, a drop hole, if you will, to rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Something devastating happens and they start to drink or they start to smoke or they start to abuse drugs, or they start to abuse their spouse, or they start to abuse their children. See, rock bottom is ugly. It's ugly. A person that lives at rock bottom is scraping the bottom of the barrel. And they're, they, if they're going to try to turn it around, they are looking for ways to come out of that. And they'll, they'll do a number of different things to come out of it. And see, the only right answer is turning to God. Now, I have here uh, the very next slide that I'm, I'm looking at. 
is one that says the COVID-19 prophecy. Because our people right now that are in a state of rock bottom, all you have to do is listen. Those that have lost their jobs because of uh, the sheltering in, the businesses that are not allowed to go on and so forth. And, they, and so people are losing their jobs or the companies that are still considered to be essential, but they, they're not full tilt in all their menu of services. So they don't need the same number of employees. So they have to lay some of those employees off. Those employees go to try to feed their family, so they register for unemployment, but can't even get registered because the website is crashing because it is so full, because 30 million people are out of work, yes, and it's just crashing all around the country. And people, you know, there are people that still don't have their stimulus checks. And so what's happening? They're feeling the heat of bill paying. They're looking at their children. I mean, it is hum it is a state of humility for a person to drive their car down to a place, a food pantry, to pick up food when they're used to providing for their family. And see, so so they're pushing, they're on that, they're they're falling into that drop hole, that insane place of rock bottom. They can see rock bottom, even if they're not at rock bottom. And that's why you hear people saying, I've got to work. I need to work. These people are going to die anyway. I'm going to take my chances. But it's better for me to work and take my chances. And if whoever dies, let them die. You know, but I'd rather take my chances than live in this drop hole that's pointing me toward rock bottom. It's a bad scene. I think I've taken a fairly decent amount of time to explain to you that rock bottom is just downright ugly and people are scratching to avoid it. We need to understand that in this COVID-19 environment that this is the case. Now, uh, I was reminded of a verse today and I wanna take you to this verse, these two verses. They're in Revelations chapter 6, and they're verses 7 and 8. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Just listen to these verses, and especially as we are operating in the COVID-19 time frame here. Verse 7 of Revelation chapter 6 says this, When the Lamb broke the fourth seal, see there are seven seals, right? When the Lamb broke the Fourth seal, this is end time prophecy. I heard the fourth living being say, come. I looked up and saw a horse whose color was pale green. Its rider was named death and his companion was the grave. These two were given authority over one fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and famine and disease and wild animals. Uh. Now I happen to uh, be looking at a YouTube video with brother and pastor Art Wilson, who pastors out of Michigan. And he was talking to one of the other pastors in Michigan on a, uh, on a Zoom video conference call, it seemed like some kind of video conference. And he was sharing what was going on at the, at the, um, the, um, oh my goodness, the international place. Why it slips my mind right this second, I can't tell. I usually think of it right off the top of my head. But uh, he also pastors the, the international community down in New York City, uh, the building. It'll come to me in a minute, and I'll just tell you. And he put this scripture up, and he said, look at what this scripture is saying, talking to the other pastor. And it is noteworthy, which is why I'm sharing it with you. So first of all, 
when the fourth seal was opened, they saw, uh, John saw a horse whose color was pale, kind of greenish, pale green. Uh, its rider's name was Death. So Death was riding this horse, and he was hanging out with the grave. In the KJV, it says hell. You know, hell was hanging out with him. So death and hell are hanging out together, you see, killing them off, killing off one-fourth of the earth. Yeah, that's a big number. And so he's going to destroy it with the sword, with famine, with disease, and wild animals. And you may or may not know that it, that the COVID-19 virus definitely came from animals. And people believe, some people believe that they got that disease in a lab and man toyed with it and manufactured it and to do whatever he's going to do and released it on us. Or that whether you believe that or whether something else happened to get COVID-19 in, in the world affecting people, whether it was a natural thing that they got from the animals and all of that doesn't matter. But the scripture here says that one fourth of the earth, death and the grave were given uh, control over one fourth of the earth. They were given authority over one fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and famine and disease and wild animals. Now, I had never paid attention to the wild animals part. Uh, King James Version says, and with beasts. But I had never given that any any consideration. But man, this this thing fits. I don't I don't know what to tell you, whether that's a circumstance or not. But that sure looks like that's prophecy. We know, in fact, that it is prophecy coming from Revelation. But do you understand that we could be seeing this prophecy fulfilled right now? right now. Oh, and by the way, we killed with the sword and with famine. Famine, that's those drought conditions. And then the sword, people are going to be fighting against each other. And that's what we're seeing in, in, in the United States. We have over 70,000 deaths and people are saying, come on, let's go to work. Open this economy back up. I've got to feed my kids. I'll take my chances. If I die, I die. Oh, my goodness. Cast caution to the wind. Well, I tell you what, I don't want to lose any of my kids. I'm not ready to sell my kids down a tube on a chance. I'd rather trust God first. In fact, that's what we're doing. That's what you're doing, and that's what I'm doing. And even those of us that are essential, that have to go into work, guess what? We're trusting God as we go into work. We're not trying to throw caution to the wind. The healthcare workers on the front line, they're saying, help me out, stay at home. But the but the workers that are failing, that are pushing, that are dropping toward rock bottom, they're saying, open this baby up and let us go. We're going to go on in. And let me tell you something. The Over 60% of the deaths in the United States, 60% or over 40,000 of those deaths come from nursing homes. Now, nursing homes are people that reside in the nursing home. And how in the world did COVID-19 get in there if the workers didn't take it in? The workers are taking it in there. And they're dying. My God. Those people were just existing. <coughs> just trying to make it. My goodness. You understand was talking to my bishop, your bishop, uh, Pastor Beersley, and he said that they had one incident of COVID-19 coming into the place where he and Sister Beersley are. Guess what? A worker brought it in. Pray. Pray. 
Now they're in, they're secure where they are. Things are going fine. They're taking all the precautions, just like you and I should be taking all the precautions. I hope you're taking all the precautions. I hope you're trying to take all the precautions. I hope when you go to the to the uh, gas pump that you are putting some uh, hand sanitizer on your hands, then reaching for it if you don't have gloves. And then before you open your door of your car with your little pinky and then get the hand sanitizer pump and pump some more in your hands before you touch anything in your car. You just can't be too safe. You say, well, I find it hard. I'm, I'm finding it hard. Well, there's a recipe that you can go out to Google and get and make your own. Do something. Do something. Don't just take it laying down. We're in a new normal, you see. We have to understand we're in this environment. And God expects us to, for the things that we can do, God expects us to do those. And it's when we, it's as we go, we are healed. And it's just like with the lepers. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says they were healed as they went. So your behaviors denote your spiritual strength. And so you handle yourself behavior-wise properly before God, and he's got you. You see, and I can't explain to you why others um, have caught this disease. There are pastors and deacons and so forth, and I've heard about them. And, you know, I can't explain that. I, you know, when we get to heaven, I'll ask God. But I know I'm going to do everything I can, and I'm not running scared. I'm not the least bit scared, you understand? I'm not. But that does not mean that I'm not going to use the conventional wisdom that is being put forth so that I can make sure that I safeguard my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to exercise common sense in these things when experts are telling us what we should do. And I've heard... And I don't know whether to believe some of the conspiracy theories that I've heard about who's trying to do this. And you know what? That That's for somebody smarter than me. That's for Jesus Christ. We'll let him handle that. But he had something to say about these last days. And we capture it in the first, uh, the first uh, part of chapter 24 of Matthew. So I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 24, and I want to read from verse 3 to verse 13. Let's just, let's just put it out here. This is the environment of the end times. Let's just put it out here. It says in verse 3, also the New Living Translation. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return? and the end of the world. Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. That's the first thing. Don't let anyone mislead you. Look to God. He's the one that knows. Look to God. Let God be your banner. You give praise and glory and honor to the Lord. Give it to God. God is the one you see. Come on now. Come on now. Don't let anyone deceive you. You lean on the Almighty and let him lead you and guide you. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and the Lord delights in the way of that good man. He's going to lead him and guide him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 4 says, uh, this is where he said, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. Let me just pause and say to you, Understand when it says nation will go against nation and kingdom against kingdom, 
That's kingdom within the kingdom of even countries. Because you can, uh, this is one thing that, that lets me know that race, racism exists, but not only does it exist in the United States, we're low-hanging fruit for the devil in this area because the contrast is black and white. You know, it's, it's, we're low hanging fruit. We go acting like this and we need to, we need to, to let God have it all because we're not going to be able to sort through every detail. It's a bunch of junk going on and, and who is right. And you, you have your feelings. I have my feelings. And this is what I'm going to say to you. We need to let God sort all that out. Cause I have friends, they're white. I have friends that are black and, and I don't have any racism problem with my friends that are white or black. I don't, you see, I have to work for me. And the reason I say we're low hanging fruit is because you go over to the, to the, uh, Middle East and the Shiites and the Sunnis are racist against one another. My goodness. They look exactly alike. Hey, the Irish and the Brits. What else do you want me to say? Kingdom shall rise against kingdom. It's right here. And yet the end is not yet. You see, <clears throat> there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. That more to come. More earthquakes, more famines, more death, more disease, more racism, more whatever, more ugliness, more tsunamis, more of everything, more storms, more towns being flooded out, just more, just more. Verse eight says, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. I heard one preacher say it like this, it's like a woman that's about to give birth and she starts having contractions. So she starts having those contractions and they become severe. And the somebody calls the doctor on her behalf and says, they're having contractions. And he says, well, how far are they apart? So, oh, they're 10 minutes. Okay, we'll call back when they're seven. And so the person stays in birth pains, but now the pain is a little bit more frequent. A little more frequent, huh? A little more frequent. Now to get to seven, they call uh, the doctor and the doctor says, uh, well, call me back when they get to five. <laughs> more and more frequent. And that's what we see. Earthquakes like never before. Like, I mean, tsunamis. I mean, I never even heard of a tsunami until we started having what, quote, tsunamis and, and you know, these uh, shifts in the ocean floor and causing these tidal waves to come up and all of this kind of stuff. And you might've heard of one, you know, what was it, the storm the Titanic went down in, but, but now we, you know, we see all these shores going under devastation and so forth. My gosh, what in the world is going on? It's happening more and more frequently, more, with more to come, the scripture says. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. People are going to backslide. And people are going to turn on you because you love the Lord. People are going to persecute you because of your lifestyle. Because your lifestyle convicts them in their wicked lifestyle. They want you to cuss like them. They want you to argue and fuss like them. They want you to uh, get mean and violent like them. They want you to act out and 
cuss somebody out like them. They want you to uh, sleep with somebody that you shouldn't be sleeping with like them. They want all this stuff like them. When you don't do it like them, you're not one of them and you become an outcast and you become subject to persecution. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. They're going to be miserable. So surely they're going to try to make you and I miserable. Verse 11 says, and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. See, false prophets know how to tell you what you want to hear. That's, that's what they're doing. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, that sounds reasonable. You better get it from the word. You better find out how God wants it to go down. Verse 12 says, sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold because of sin. Sin makes your heart grow cold. You Sin makes, makes it difficult for you to love. Mm-hmm. When you sin, you affect your ability to love. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. You're going to get a stony heart, you sinners. You've stiffened up. You've decided that you're going to do what God doesn't want you to do. You've stiffened up, and here you go. So you do that sin. You plan to do that sin. You're not going to let up from doing that sin. And your love grows cold. My gosh. My gosh. Survey the landscape so you know what you're dealing with. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. You see, the times are ugly. We are experiencing the multiplied the exponentially multiplied impact of sin since the world began. I'm a Makisha Sabah. And so this, this world is rampant with all kinds of spiritual wickedness and negativity. I mean, how perverted is it? And you, you know, you've heard the stories for someone to sexually abuse a child. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I, I, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, I, I, I don't know, church, Facebook guests, what do we say to this? The Lord is predicting it. These are the words of Jesus himself. These are Jesus's words. And by the way, he's telling this to his disciples. Now you and I know he had one go bad. He's telling this to his disciples. Huh. I'm not at a loss for words. I'm just allowing you in your thought process to understand what is being said so that you can deal with whatever may be trying to sneak up on you. God doesn't want to lose anybody, but they're going to turn around and they're going to go away. And when they go away, they're going to, they're going to turn around, turn back toward you and sling mud your way. This, you're going you're gonna to get persecuted. Uh, the scripture said uh, even killed. Uh, then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. Verse 9, Matthew 24. My gosh. And see, if it wasn't for God, you and I, we wouldn't stand a chance. See, you, see, right now, if you understand the condition of the world, we're living in our rock bottom. 
There's a reason for you and I to endure to the end so that we can be saved. We're living rock bottom. Makisha Saba. We're living in a world that doesn't like us. Hama Makisha Saba. And I'm not trying to make you or I a victim. I'm not. But there's nothing about this world that God is going to keep. When he comes and catches us away, we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth, mainly because he said it. He said it. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This old heaven and earth are not going to be fit for what God wants to do with you and I when we make it to heaven. I hope you want to make it to heaven. I hope that's on your agenda. But we're living in rock bottom. We're living with death all around us, the threat of death, the threat of disease all around us. Come on, understand it so you can know. Know what you're dealing with so you won't be misled, so you won't be caught unaware. You know, we have to endure to the end. We're in rock bottom. This is as bad as it's going to get. Come on now. This is it. We, we need to be ready for what the Lord wants to do. We need to be focused on what he's asked us to do. And we can overcome. We can make it. We can. But we're living the rock bottom. And we need to gear up. And we need to stand up. And we need to set our chin and square our shoulders. And we need to say, we're going to make it. You and I. No, I'm not falling for that. This is how I'm choosing to live my life. This is what it is. And this is how it's going to go for me and mine. I have already decided I'm going to walk with Jesus Christ. I'm going to follow the word of God. I'm going to do what the word of God suggests be done in this situation and this one and this one, and this one, and if you try to find a situation that I'm going to face that's not in the book, then the one who filled me with his spirit is going to come let me know how to conduct myself. I cannot lose when I'm focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. I refuse to let go of him. I'm going to hold on to the hem of his garment. I'm going to count him as my savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I must do this thing. Hallelujah. Now, let me read a passage to you. This is the last set of scripture that I have. It's in Revelations chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, starting at verse 9. Read this way. After this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count. From every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. By the way, if you go to Psalm chapter 19, it tells you that the white robes is the righteousness of the saints. The white robes that it's describing here is the righteousness of the saints. That's the biblical definition of the white robes. These are people that endeavored to do right, endeavored to be right in the eyes of God, endeavored to please God and to walk in the favor of God. The, the circumstances did not have to be perfect. They just had to be right. And God did not evaluate them for their, their actual performance. He evaluated them on their attempt to walk right and to live right and to desire him. We don't make it unless we stay repentant. Hallelujah. So that the righteousness of God, the blood of Jesus Christ can wash us afresh. Hallelujah. That blood mixed with the water uh, that was on the cross that came out of Jesus' side in John chapter 19, verse 33. And then going from there to water baptism in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, 
uh, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, getting baptized in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we go, that water and that blood come together, meaning, meaning that they, they are synonymous in the spirit. When you get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, God counts you washed in his blood. And it's necessary for that water baptism that God wants you to get, according to Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 38. And then in Acts chapter 8, verse 16, Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48, Acts chapter 19, 5, 6, and 7. Come on, Makosho Sabaki. Be washed in the blood. And if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that which has been preached unto you, let him be accursed. Hallelujah. The words of Paul, who did the baptizing in Ephesus in uh, Acts chapter 19. He said, I only have one gospel. The one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Yaki Asaba. Shoulder no more say. So I'm telling you to put your gospel on lockdown. I'm telling you to set your chin, square your shoulders, you know, fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Now watch this in, in Revelation chapter 7. After this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. Note, not racist. <laughs> See, we get it right in Jesus Christ. We get it right in Jesus Christ because every nation can be together. We can call them our brother. Our love has not waxed cold by sin. See, we're living a life of righteousness, the white robes are the righteousness of the saints, you see. And so, so we get it right. So all this talk about racism goes bye-bye in Jesus Christ because he made us all. He's the one that selected our race. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You got to understand that. He knew you before he placed you in your mother's womb. He selected your mother when he placed you in her womb. Mokoshe Abasaki. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. See, these are people that made it. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. They sang, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the 24 elders asked me, Who are these who are clothed in white? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who died in the great tribulation. Time out. Who died in the rock bottom environment. Who died being persecuted and arrested and killed who lived in a world where children were being abused, rock bottom, where uh, spouses were being abused, rock bottom, where homosexuality was running rampant, rock bottom, where homosexuals are getting changing the, the terminology of marriage uh, from the biblical definition of marriage, rock bottom. Makishayo Mose. Ho, hayaraka mosiaba. You see, rock bottom, great tribulation, came out of great tribulation. You are called to make it in great tribulation. 
You're supposed to make it to heaven. You're supposed to be in this crowd that is around the throne because the rapture has taken place. You're supposed to be here. Hallelujah. They have washed their robes in the blood of the lamb and made them white. Hmm. Yeah, see. That is why they stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will give them shelter. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life, give, excuse me, springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Because they're going to be tears. Because we're going to have to fight for our lives. This is the Christian's rock bottom. Makishayo Mosa. If you're wondering why it's been so hard, take heart, lean on Jesus. You're going to be okay. God's going to get us through this. Hallelujah. 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 You see, I'm telling you, if you recognize you're in rock bottom, Makishayo Mose, it'll make you act differently. Hallelujah. It'll change how you think if you recognize that you're in a rock bottom world. The Lord said he was going to come at a time that if he delayed his coming, the very elect would not be saved. My, oh my. He's coming before I lose my salvation. Come on now. I'm going to make it. It's God's will that I make it, and God's got the will that surpasses everyone else's. If anyone can save me, God can save me. I can't save myself, but God can save me. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to make it. I'm going to live for eternity. I'm going to make it. I see that I can make it because I see my creator. I see what he was willing to do for me, how he came in human form and died on a cross for my sins so that I can make it to heaven. Hallelujah. 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 And this is the gospel that saves. That's why water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is so important. You're reading it here in Revelation chapter four, chapter seven, verse 14. You, they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. You want to tell me baptism is not important? Don't tell me that baptism is not important. When Jesus got baptized and when he came up out of the water, the heavens were open to him. God was showing us what happens in water baptism. Hallelujah. Come on, we, if I was in the church building right now, if I was standing up preaching this to, to you right now, I'd be dancing a jig because of what Jesus has done. He deserves to be celebrated. He deserves to be honored. He deserves all the praises that I can give him and then still more than that. I'm trying to tell you that Jesus Christ is the one. He is the one for you and I. He has set the course in order, and it's not going to be easy, but it is going to be right. I might get some spiritual scars along the way, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it because it is the will of God that I make it. I'm going to become an overcomer, not by my strength, but by the strength of the one who's saving me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I shall prevail in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I realize I'm dealing in a rock bottom world. I'm, I'm, I mourn, the Bible says, to mourn for the state of your communities. Take a look around. There's plenty to cry about. Hallelujah. 
but I have Jesus Christ that levels the playing field. Uh-huh. And the beauty of it is I'm the one he's given power in his name to cast out devils, to lay hands on others and myself, just as you are, believers. These signs shall follow believers. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If you're not speaking with new tongues, you need the Holy Ghost. You need to give me a call. 302 932 0010. Let's set up a Zoom conference call so I can talk to you about the Holy Ghost. And we'll pray for the Holy Ghost right on the video conference. And we'll let God fill you with His Holy Spirit because it's His will and it's a free gift. I'm not going to teach you how to speak in tongues. I'm going to teach you how to approach God. He's the one that the tongues has to come from, not some man, not some woman, not some preacher. Not some minister, not some deacon, not some usher. The Holy Spirit comes from God. And that language that, that you hear me lapsing into here and there, that comes from God. It's God-given. I'm a Makisha Saba. I can show you the word. Hallelujah. That's not going to change. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in order to even enter into the kingdom of God. All God is saying is, I died for you. You want my death to be a substitute for yours? Come on, you die with me. That happens in water baptism. That's a form of death, the scripture tells us. Read Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 6. You'll see it. Read it in some version that's easy to understand so, so that you can understand what's going on there. And if you pray about it, God will reveal it to you. We don't have a secret on the gospel. The gospel is supposed to be known. But people with hard hearts whose love has grown cold cannot receive the gospel of God. They got to get rid of that sin first. They've got to ask God to forgive them of their sin. You see why they can't make it? You see why they can't come? Because they won't repent. That's not my fault. That's not your fault. It, sin is going to, it, sin is rampant. And because of the sin of many, it's causing their love to grow cold. They have to get rid of the sin in order for their love to come alive. Think about that. How's that for revelation for you? Just based on the verses that we looked at tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in a COVID-19 environment, let me tell you what's going on. God is in control. Uh-huh. I dare say the people that have passed away with COVID-19, I would dare say to you this that it must have been their time if they were walking with God. It was just their time. Don't, don't get it confused. God is still in control. Death cannot approach you without permission from God. Hey, don't get upset if God feels like, you know what, I want him home with me. And he comes and brings him home with him. Or he brings her home with him. Don't get upset with God. He loves them. Makiyayo Mose. He loves them. They fulfilled their course. They finished the race. You don't have to question, you know, this and that and the other. Do what you can do, but trust God above all else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, that's that's the story. That's the message for tonight. I'm letting you know it's 835 and I've been going for about 60 minutes. Church, you should be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. Don't hang your head down. We serve the God of the universe. Know what you believe. Be resolute in what you believe. 
Make sure what you believe is founded in the scripture. And then let's just worship God. I'm going to worship from here. You worship from there. And let's just light it up for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. I don't care if something were to happen and he would take me out. You still worship God. By the way, I'm endeavoring to be ready. I'm endeavoring to be ready. I'm being watchful. In fact, I'll, I'll just lob this in for free. I have told you all, you, you wonderful people who are focused on paying your tithes and offerings, and I want to tell you that the church is doing good because you're forwarding your tithes and offerings and so forth. And so the church is still viable, still rolling the way we would if we were there in the place. For those of you that, that haven't had an opportunity, you're still waiting on me. Let me make the official announcement that we now have a post office box after all these many weeks. Can you believe it? We now have a post office box. And that is P.O. Box 1037. And now that's in Bear. Bear, Delaware, 19701. You send your mail there, I'll get your mail, okay? If you're sending payments, don't send cash, you see. If you want to send me a nice card and say hello, go ahead and do it. P.O. Box 1037, Bear, Delaware, 19701. The title line is Wilmington Apostolic Pentecostal Church. But I'll get it if you put my name on it too or my wife's name on it. It's all going to go to that P.O. box and, you know, we'll get your mail. We'll be able to take care of all of those things while we're sheltering in, while we're sheltering in. For some of you, I know I promised that I was going to put a radio dial uh, so that you can pay electronically. But they're thieves and I don't like it. They're thieves and I don't like it. And that's why I haven't done it. I kept promising. First, I had the excuse. Well, if we had a P.O. box, then we could do the, do the, the cash app stuff. Uh, and then we, we got the P.O. box, and I still couldn't bring myself to do the cash app stuff. Because they're thieves. They want 3.5%. So you, you're going to give God $100, and they're going to take theirs off the top. So you're not giving God what you want to give them because they're going to take theirs off the top like some thief or robber. I don't like that. I don't like that. I'd rather you spend 40 or 50 cents and get a stamp and, you know, send it on. You know, that's fine. If you don't like dealing with checks, then get a certified check. Send it on. You know, but then even that's a cost, but you don't have to. You can just write a check and send it on in and that'd be fine. God will honor that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So there, for many of you that have been waiting to hear uh, about the cash app button and so forth, it's not going to happen. I don't want to do it. If they wouldn't take stuff, not, I'm not even going to explain it any further. I don't want to do it. Read Samuel. Read 1 Samuel chapter 2. Then call me. Hey, let's have a video conference. We can talk about it. Anybody want a video conference to talk about it? Contact me. You know how to get in touch with me, church family. We can set up a video conference and we can talk about all those things. Okay? Amen. Amen. I love you. I love you. You're pure as the driven snow. I'm not saying you're perfect, but you know what? You're a child of God and you're heaven bound. You know, with all of your imperfections, the only one that's going to make you perfect is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knows how to perfect that which he loves. And he's going to perfect us. We're not going to have a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. You know, the rest of the world will be caught by surprise for those that are not looking for Jesus to come. But for those that look for him, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be okay. God bless you. I love you tremendously in Jesus Christ. 
You are good people and you keep it up. You keep going strong. You are walking in victory. Don't let the devil tell you you're not because you are. And even when you fall down, victory is still on you. Victory fell to the ground, but you know what victory does? Victory does not quit. That's what victory does. Victory does not quit. A righteous man falleth seven times and gets back up again. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, send me a text and let me, let me know you're doing okay. That'd be great. Amen. I'll text you back, I promise. Amen. God bless you. Have a good evening. Stay safe. Amen.